And now we welcome to our virtual stage, our today's guest, Yuval Levavi from the University of Fien, um, who will speak about Inside a New Babylonian Temple, Bureaucracy, Identity and Office Politics. Welcome, Yuval. Thank you, Armando. Thank you, uh, Sander, for the introduction and for the uh, invitation. And let me just uh, share my screen with you. It. Do you see my screen? Yes, we can see. Thank All you. Right. Okay. So, yes, as I said, uh, I will be talking about uh, the Neo Babylonian uh, uh, temple, uh, looking inside. Um, and the talk today would be uh, uh, structured as follows. I will start with a general overview, historical overview, uh, the where and the when. Then uh, we will focus on Uruk and the uh, an archive. Uh, we will talk a little bit about the concept of service, Akkadian uh, Matsautu, and then the, the, the main part of this uh, uh, talk will focus on the interaction between officials, temple officials with the outside world, and then the, the, uh, within the temple itself. So we're going from the macro to the micro. And we will start with a general overview, and this overview um, is based, it's mainly based on the um, uh, on a group of texts called the Chronicles, the Babylonian Chronicles, which we will not discuss today, but this is usually the text we use for the reconstruction of the overall history, the political history. Uh, so this is based on these texts, they are not from the Anahata books. Uh, so we start from the uh, uh, 7th century, the Neo Assyrian period. This is more or less the Neo Assyrian Empire. To the south, we have Egypt, and throughout the 8th and 7th century, uh, the Babylonians who were under Assyrian control constantly tried to rebel and gain independence. And one of these times in 626, Nebuchadnezzar, who came from a local Urukian family uh, who were working with the Assyrians, were slightly more successful. He was able to uh, uh, take control of Babylon and uh, declare himself king of Babylon again in 626. Uh, and was, the, the Assyrians did not give up. So they had to uh, uh, keep uh, forcing the Assyrians up north uh, in 614. He took uh, Ashur, the old city of Ashur. In 612, he was able to capture Nineveh, the political uh, capital. There was still a small Assyrian force left in Haran, but uh, in 609, this fell as well, and the Assyrian Empire was no more. And at that time, the Babylonians found themselves facing the Egyptians uh, on the shores of the Euphrates, and in 605, Nebuchadnezzar still his crown prince led the Babylonian armies uh, to do great win against uh, Egypt and basically taking over the entire Levant. Slightly later, his father died, Nebuchadnezzar died, and Nebuchadnezzar became king. And in 604, he destroyed Ashkelon, then he made a failed attempt uh, to, to, to go into Egypt. Uh, slightly later, we, we of course have the uh, destruction of, Je of Jerusalem and the temple in 686. But this more or less is as the Neo Babylonian Empire as we know it later. Uh, uh, there were several attempts in the south, uh, in the northwest, sorry, by Eric Lissar and Nebuchadnezzar, uh, of course, also in Arabia. But this is more or less the Neo Babylonian Empire as we know it. And our focus today, as we say, is on Uruk, the city of Uruk in the southern part of, uh, of Babylonia. And specifically, we're looking at the Eana Archive. Eana is a temple of Ishtar in Uruk. And the archive, as we know it today, we're talking about, uh, uh, about 8,000 8, uh, tablets and fragments from both the Neo Babylonian and Persian period. This is more or less a chronological span of the archive. We have very few texts after the early years of Darius. And very few texts before Nebuchadnezzar uh, dated to Candelano, but this is more or less uh, what we have, mainly from the Neo Babylonian period, but as, we said, as I said, also the Persian period. Now, most of these texts are legal and administrative texts. Uh, we will see a few examples in a minute. Uh, 700 or so of these texts are what we call letters, uh, administrative letters, and this will be our focus today. Um, we have to remember when we talk about letters that they deal with the, uh, uh, you send a letter when something goes wrong. So when you read a letter after letter after letter, you get a feeling that nothing works and everything uh, uh, is, 
just no, nothing is working, which is not really the case. You just look of, of all the problems, very much like uh, we use emails today. Uh, but as I said, most of the texts are legal and administrative texts. So just to give uh, two very small uh, examples, this is a simple receipt for one mina, 50 shekels uh, of bronze is slightly less than a kilo. Uh, these are at the disposal of Lebelutz, the smith, for his work, and then we have the date, the uh, 31st year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and this is, of course, hand copy from the Yos volume that uh, was mentioned before. Uh, so again, this is a simple receipt. We have many thousands of these texts, and another type of, of uh, common text is a legal text, which says that in month 12, is a double. Nabushuma Edin, son of Beliah, will arrive at Ur and will settle the account of goats with Ninuta Shabu Utsu, the Kipu of Eana, and Nabu Nadin Shumi, the Shatamu of Eana. If he won't, he'll pay seven minus of silver and then something broken. We have a list of witnesses, which I didn't write, didn't list. And again, it's written in Upis from the Eana Arta, which was written in Upis in the north. Uh, 26 year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And one of the things we can see in this text, uh, again, very common, is we have the names of the Kipu and the Shatamu and an exact date. The Kipu and the Shatamu are the two high officials of the temple. I will talk a little bit more about them later, but for now, what, we, uh, uh, what I want us to see is that we can uh, reconstruct the, uh, the, uh, the list, the, the, the terms of the high official in the temple, so I can see here, here I give the royal resident, which is the Kipu, temple administrator, in the Shatamu, then temple scribe, to Shabiti. These are the three main officials of the temple. I also listed in the, uh, to the right the governor of Uruk, which is, was, of course, uh, quite important in the city and uh, had a lot of interaction with the temple. Now, this table, uh, in this table, I show the, early, the late, later years of the neo Syrian Empire and the early years of the neo Babylonian Empire, uh, Empire period. Uh, and the, these officials that you see here at the top, uh, Shama Shilaya, Belupadi, and so on, these were working under Assyrian control, uh, uh, appointed by Assyrians, and was were obviously pro-Assyrians. Unsurprisingly, once Nebuchadnezzar take over in 626, he appoints uh, a, a, a completely new uh, a, 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 a group of officials, Samu Udami Kudugu, who some of you may know is probably the very young future king Nebuchadnezzar, uh, and so on. Now, interestingly, all of these officials, when we look at the, at the tablets, uh, disappear in the third year of Nebuchadnezzar. And we, have, we only have two of the, of the actual names, but all of them are replaced. The temple administrator is now Gemilu, the governor of Ur is now Udamik, um, and the tablets are not dated to the third, fourth, and fifth year of Nebuchadnezzar, rather to the closing of the gate or the time of the rebellion. So there was unrest in the land, they had to close the gates and, and, and these officials were in charge of the temple. Now, specifically Gimilu, we know him from earlier uh, text from the Assyrian period. So he was active in Uruk, he was local, but was active in Uruk already under the Assyrian uh, regime. Now in the sixth year of Nebuchadnezzar, we again, all of the officials are reinstated. Amuru Dami, Kudu, Amad Shakin Shumi, and Alan Idin. So all of them are re uh, reinstated by Nebuchadnezzar. And what we can get from what we can gather from this is that, unlike the, the story we got from the Chronicles, uh, earlier I showed you the uh, 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 straightforward uh, uh, progress of the Babylonians pushing the Assyrians more and more to the north. But in reality, between the third and fifth year of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the Assyrians were able to take control over Uruk. But, uh, Nebuchadnezzar still controlled Babylon, but Uruk in the south was controlled again by the Assyrians and they were able to, uh, 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 to reinstall their own officials. So this is something that we don't have in the, uh, uh, in the Chronicles, but we can see the, the progress and uh, 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 the progress of, of the war between, uh, between the two sides. And we actually have uh, several letters written from that exact time. Now, the first letter we will read is actually the, the, the only letter which does not come from the Anna archive. It actually comes from, uh, from Nineveh because it was sent from Uruk to Nineveh uh, at the time 
of uh, of, of that in, at the time of the three years of the Assyrian retaking of uh, of Uruk. Um, and the, the beginning is lost, but clearly the, the writers are local Urukians and they are write, writing to the king, to the Assyrian king, the king, our lord, appointed Nabu Udamik as governor of Uruk. We were as good as dead, but now grace was bestowed upon our officers. He entrusted Nabu Udamik over us and took after the royal service, Matsartu Shashal. We'll talk about Matsartu in a minute. And, and Nabu Udamik is a, exactly the governor of Uruk we saw in the in between period. And they continue. So this is how we can precisely date this letter. Nabu Akl also served Uruk and the Heana by the order of, of Ashurbanipal, your father. He, however, seized property of Uruk and Heana. We some, did something and dragged Kudur's body in the street and drove his sons out of Uruk. We had legal dispute with them before Ashurbanipal, your father, who ruled in our favor. He took back our houses, our privilege, and our gardens, which were wrongfully taken, and gave them to us. He gave their gardens to the Lady of Uruk and Anaya. Lady of Uruk is, of course, Ishtar. He did not let them back in Uruk. And then after some break, the Nipurians who are in Uruk are telling us Nebuchadnezzar, it's reconstructed, but, uh, but it uh, really is quite certain. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar and Nabushuma Ishkun, sons of Uduru, were sent to Uruk, and then the letter breaks off. But we see here the, a, a, a letter from exactly from, uh, from this point, and uh, partly on the base of this letter, we have the name Nabu Aplu Utsu uh, uh, and Kuduru. This is Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's family. So this is how we can know that they were serving, working for the Assyrians actually before they rebelled uh, 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 and gained independence and, and, and got their independence. Kuduru mentioned here is not Nebuchadnezzar, but is very well maybe his grandfather. Um, another letter that we have were sent to Uruk, to the temple, slightly later. It's a letter by Malduch and Enin Shuma, also to Malduch Shakin Shumi, their father. Malduch Shakin Shumi is the temple's father. We were here well before the rebellion in Uruk. Again, they're referring to the three years of the Assyrian retaking of Uruk. So how come the Lord counts us as uh, among the enemies? You were assigned with something prevents and the gardens of Babylon by the king. Again, they are interested in the same things that the pro-Syrians officials were interested, gardens and prevents and so on. Whoever, ha whoever has, has his, uh, his prevent and or garden at his disposal is paying from it the Nidim to give to the king and enjoy the rest for himself. Now I am sending to my lord his slave girl and her son, assign our income to, to a brother of mine of whom she will tell you. Should the kipu has have the votive offering while we are eating leftovers in the gate of our prison, you are our patron. So we see here that again, like the poor Syrians, what they're interested in is status and income uh, 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 within the city, and we can see a, a, a much deeper. Uh, we get a much deeper uh, picture of the just uh, pro, uh, uh, the Syrians in control, the Babylonians control. We get a, a view into the temple now. We mentioned, I mentioned uh, earlier in the previous letter, we saw the concept of uh, uh, the Akkadian word Matsavu, which is the concept of service. So the basic meaning is God who watch or preservation. Uh, it could be military, it could be astronomical. And it's, it's parallel very nicely with Hebrew Shmeret uh, uh, that we find several times in, uh, in the Old Testament. Now, in our context, the obligation is to attend to an office or to an institution. So. When we see the Matsatu, it is to be watched over or looked after. We have many letters by subordinate to their supervisors in which they promise they are keeping the Matsatu. This is one example. I am praying for you for the Lady of Uruk and Anaya and looking after your, your duties, your Matsatu. Um, in letters from a uh, superior to subordinate, we find a lot of warning, many warnings not to neglect Lashelu, the Matsatu. Uh, this is one example of, uh, of such a letter. Do not neglect the service of the Anna. So the service of Matsat could be of the high of, of your boss, of your superior, but also you have a general Matsat of the temple that they were all bound to. And this Matsat was also recognized by the king himself, the Matsat specifically of the temple. This is, for example, a letter by uh, Nebuch uh, Nebuchadnezzar, already as king. And it has a word of the king to Nabu Nabu I'm well, may you be happy. Do not neglect the service of Ayana. 
son to Shayana, the temple of my gods. And he called them my gods because every soul he came from fine bread, fine beer, and fat and sheep should be offered to my, uh, to my gods, look after the service uh, of the temple of my gods and pray for Baal and Abu, uh, pray for me to Baal and Abu. So uh, here, these are more the state gods, not specifically in Ur. But the king, uh, the king recognizes specific matzati of the temple. Importantly, it is separated for the, uh, from the obligation or loyalty to the crown. And um, and this is why we, we have a, 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 another example for that. So this clear separation is in a letter sent by several field supervisors, temples from the Anna, who were sent outside and they're writing back home and say, although we guarantee for our uh, for our men, sorry, to complete their work, we don't guarantee for the entire work. Why would you guarantee for the work? Well, even the palace of Versir did not guarantee for the king's work. So this, they have a very clear idea of what they have to do and, uh, and what they don't have to do, even if this is the king's work, uh, the royal uh, work. And in another letter, um, so we have when we have these clashes, sorry, when we have these clashes uh, uh, between institutes, between uh, uh, different authorities, natural, uh, naturally we have uh, we have problems. And again, as I said, letters are written when problems occur, and this is a, a great example of that. Again. A, a field supervisor, a temple official in the field writing back to the temple administrator and the temple scribe, and he says, regarding the fields of the shepherd's estate, which the scribe uh, had entrusted me with, Mushali Maldus came on the 23rd day of month four, is it Uzu, beat me and drove me away from the field, saying, who is a scribe of Feana? This field is mine, Nabu knows I hold it. Will the king take it from me? Has anyone taken it from me? Who gave it to the lady of Ur? That the temple scribe has any have any authority over me. So clearly, they have a notion of what they can and cannot do, what the temple can do, what the king can do, uh, and their obligation, uh, uh, like uh, in this case, as the letter writers, ob obligation and loyalty is to the temple. And another example of temple official who who is facing such such problems. Um, maybe slightly more uh, 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 severe. Uh, again, writing back to the temple administrator, he says, the, Piku the protesters carried sticks. There were Picudians and Sealanders among them. I told them, go to the temple administrator and the temple scribe, they did not accept it. So this is, a cl this, this is clearly a, a, a question of authority and, a, and boundaries between this institution. And it's interesting in this case that he's specifically mentioning or identifying the, the, the mob that he is facing as Picudians and Sealanders. If this is our map, here is Uruk, uh, the Picudians, the Picudu was a tribe to their east, and the Sealand was the southernmost uh, uh, district of Babylonia. And in fact, the, the governor of the Sealand was the highest state official in the south, and the Sealand actually had authority over Iran. They worked a lot together, uh, but the Sealand was clearly uh, uh, higher. There was a, a spear to the Anna, and the Anna had to, 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 to work and send uh, men and materials to the Sealand. And we have several letters sent from the Sealand to the Anna. This is one example of the letter from the governor of the Sealand to, again, the royal uh, resident, temple administrator, and temple scribe. And he says, quickly, 50 or 60 quivers should arrive already this year. Prepare something and come rule and get them to me. I've been looking after your, uh, your duties, your Matsatu, for the past 15 years. So now you take care of mine. I wish neither silver nor gold. I will know, and I will know this, who will look after my service. Now, this last note uh, 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 may be read as a threat, but in light of what comes before it, it's a promise. Uh, uh, he's saying, I'm not asking for much, and we're working together for the past 15 years. Uh, uh, so just do, the, do, do, do me this solid because uh, he really needs the quivers and wool and uh, again, something that, is, uh, th something that is lost. And it is interesting because he is their superior, but because he's stressed for, uh, for this quivers, he is willing to put himself in a much more subordinate uh, position. And again, as I said, we have many, many letters from the Sealand to the Anna. One of them uh, uh, is from, uh, an official called Nabu Etin Apshati, who was the deputy of Sealand, deputy of the governor of the Sealand. 
And we have many of his letters uh, uh, to, to Nadin, who was the temple administrator of Fe'ana. Nadin is a short version of its name, Nabu Nadin Shumi is the full name, so we saw him already before. And he says, there's no bull in the temple. Without the rule, the women are idle. Now then, uh, now then I'm sending Nabu Mokin Apli and Khea, my delegates, they should not array with you, weigh two tenths of wool and give to them. So again, later he will say he will actually take the cost of transportation, which again means he's very stressed. There is no wool in the temple. And the comment about the woman, uh, the woman is very interesting because this is not an important or helpful information in any way. Um, as we'll see in a minute, these two were, were good friends for, 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 for a long time. And they, have, uh, they had actually personal business on the side alongside their, their uh, professional interaction. And this sounds like just too powerful, man. This sounds like a chauvinistic uh, uh, note about the nature of women that it's stuck. Women are idle and probably drives me mad. And this is the, the tone in which this uh, note should be, should be read to my view. Um, and to show you, I mean, to show you that these two were good friends and long time friends. So the next three letters uh, 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 we will read are all from this Nabu Etin Apshati, deputy of the Sealand to the same Nadin temple administrator. And one time, one letter he says, do not neglect the written document concerning the temple assembly for which the city governor of Uruk had issued you, uh, he issued you an order. Make an effort and see to it yourself, you personally. Do not exempt anyone from it. No stolen goods can be can, can be caught in your hands. So there's some problem with the, with the governor of Uruk. We don't know exactly what, but he's warning him first, do what as, as, as you should. Don't go, uh, uh, don't improvise, don't do anything that is out of order. Do as the, the uh, governor tells you and make sure that you are not caught with anything in your hands. And then he had, regarding all that you have spoken with me, my brother can be. And again, this seemed to be a personal note regarding the, their personal business, uh, businesses. And the reason I, uh, uh, I assume this is their personal business is uh, uh, notes in other letters, for example, this is. And ex all are excerpts of those, are not full letters, uh, from another letter in which uh, the deputy of the ceiling says, send me 10 minus of your own silver. I will deliver back to my brother wherever he needs, whatever he needs. So again, they had personal interaction. And not only they, they had good, they were friends basically uh, for a long time, they knew that the people around them are aware of their relation. And this affected the way they, 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 they work together. And this is probably the best example for, 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 the, for the knowledge of other people to their friendship and the nature of their friendship. Again, from Nabuetin Apshati to Nadin, regarding the lands about which my brother has reached, I'm not authorized to distribute it just by the, uh, a request of the people without the king's word. So I can't just do it. I have to have, it's, we have to have proper procedure. Were I to distribute it without reporting it, the Sealand people would say, did Nadin distribute it due to his personal friendship or did you distribute it taking land? So something that he should not have uh, distributed. The Urukian on the other hand will say, did Nabu Etin Amshati distribute it due to his personal friendship or is it the word of the king? So the phrasing here is, 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 is complex, but basically he says that we have to do it right because otherwise uh, people will accuse us of doing something for the other just based on our friendship. Uh, and the final uh, suggestion is um, the conclusion. I will come in months 12 or Adal, so you and I may, lit may litigate before the king and the governor of Sealand. If it be the king's will, they will give it to me, and if not, they will give it to you. So we cannot make our own decision on that. Uh, uh, justice has to be seen, right? They have to, people will not accept uh, uh, us just deciding these things without uh, 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 the king's word or the governor's word. And I mentioned several times before, this, is, this letter is addressed to the temple administrator and I mentioned the keep already and the temple scribe. Uh, so let's look for a, moment, uh, for, for a second on the, uh, the, the structure of the, uh, of the temple. So we saw, up until now we saw interaction of officials from the temple with outsiders. And now we're gonna look uh, 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 inwards. So on top of the hierarchy, we have the royal residence, the, the kipu. He was appointed by the king and was in charge of the temple's obligation towards the palace, towards the kipu. Um, and he was accompanied by a temple administrator, a shatamu, and a temple scribe, who were both from the local elite, from the local families, 
and they were in charge basically on the day-to-day -day, uh, 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 operation of the temple. The temple scribe in this regard was more or less a deputy for the temple administrator. And now this structure has a built-in conflict or potential conflict because first of all, they have different interests. The temple administrator and Shatamu, uh, temple administrator and temple scribe, they, they, they are in charge of the temple and they, uh, they take care of the temple day-to-day -day operation while the royal residence um, is in charge of the obligation towards the palace. So they have different uh, uh, fields of, uh, of responsibility, which may clash as we will see in a minute. Uh, but also we're talking about local elite versus outsider, uh, which is on the personal level, this plays a part. And the, 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 the fact that the temple administrator, temple scribe, and most of the officials obviously came from the local uh, families and they were very close society. We can see it actually uh, at the uh, and office holders themselves. This is a, the, the, the table we saw before of the last Nova Syrian and first Nova Babylonian uh, officials. So if you look, for example, at this Nabudani Shumi, this is Nadin, we saw him before. He was first a temple scribe, then he was appointed to the temple administrator, promoted, uh, and he was replaced by Marduf Edir, which was who was actually his brother. Uh, another example is Marduf Shafiq Zeri, who was uh, was the temple administrator in the mid years of mid reign of Nebuchadnezzar, and he was replaced by his son, uh, Malduf Belshun. So we have a lot of this going on, and to into this scene, into this structure, the temple, the, the royal resident, the Kipu, uh, uh, enters. And I want to focus on two officials the royal resident, uh, Ninota Shabu Utsu, and the temple administrator, Nabu Acheidim. You know, Shah Utsur was in, in office for, for, for about 30 years, and Abu al Qaedin for about 15 years. Uh, and we have a lot of letters between these two and by these two, re mentioning the other. Uh, and I want to focus a little bit uh, on the interaction between. So, first, uh, we'll start with a simple case, a simple letter of Ninuta Shah Utsur to the uh, uh, temple administrator, Nabu al Qaedin in which following several complaints, he says, quickly send me 20 plowmen. Now, uh, the reconstruction that I'm going to show you uh, is not certain, of course, but it does illustrate the kind of conversation we find in this letter. So he's asking for 20 plowmen and Nabu Akharin apparently did not reply. So he sent another letter in which he says, for fear and the king and your other oath to him, let me the plowmen, otherwise the king will hear about and here it's interesting when you have to, uh, when, when, he, when he decides to, th to threat, to make a threat, unlike the, the, the most of them, most temple officials, he is not talking about the matzal to, of Nabu Akhaidin towards the temple. He's going to the king. He's uh, relying on the king and his authority because he is the royal, represent, the royal resident in the temple. He's a temple official, but he's a king's representative. And apparently this did the work because then we have another letter by Nabu Akhaidin this time to one of his subordinates, in which he seemed to refer to the same matter and says, I am sending to you 20 plowmen, send them to the send to the keeper, whatever he orders you, do not cause any obstruction. So maybe this threat actually worked. Uh, and the keeper did uh, eventually receive his 20 plowmen. But he constantly had problems receiving from the temple. Uh, uh, what he wanted, again, because he was an outsider. And a nice example for that is a letter by the royal resident to one of the, uh, uh, the mid-rank temple officials in Uruk, um, in which he says, why that when the temple administrator writes to you from here, you send him the silver, but when I write you, you don't send him the silver. This is as clear as it gets. And as Nilda Shavu Utsu says, um, it's, he, he just, he feels not appreciated or not respected, uh, probably. Uh, and Ninota Shavuot actually had his way with word, uh, mainly when it comes to complaints. Uh, so here is another letter sent to the temple administrator and the temple scribe, very lively letter by the same Ninota Shavuot, in which he says, is this what I deserve? Should I die here? You may not say as you wish to, we can do the work of the dam with just one slave and one slave girl. The work of the dam, uh, uh, the work here is hard. The delivery of bricks is heavy on us. Every single one of our strong workers has escaped. Let me send strong workers and hired laborers that fit for the work. So obviously he needs men, he needs uh, working hands, 
but his language is very, very uh, unique. And when you read many of the letters, you, you get to know this, this guy. He was very emotional. And he continues and says, as you can see, all the overseers of 50s, so the temple overseers, are coming before you. Ask them how the work is being done. There's an issue of trust here. Every day the Mashenu official and the palace scribe are standing over us, examining the workflow, quickly send them their way, they should come. So the temple is the royal residence, the Kirku. Um, as I said, he is a temple uh, uh, official, but he's caught between, he's not accepted by his temple uh, uh, colleagues and the royal uh, officials, like the Mashenu officials, Mashenu officials, sorry, and the palace scribe are looking, uh, uh, see, him, see him as a temple uh, official. But, so he, he, his, his, his term was very, very uh, troubled. But his term was actually, as we said, was very long, slightly over 30 years. So um, we see the conflict is getting worse. And although Nabu Akhaidin is, uh, it was a local, and in Uta Shahu Utsur sounds weird, and he has a special way to, 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 to phrase his, his complaints, uh, he was the one who, who was able to, to outlive or outwork Nabu Akhaidin, and in fact, we have some clues that Nabu Akhaidin and his family got into trouble at the end of his term, around 1920, uh, the 19th or 20th of, of, of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, and their position was confiscated by the temple. So they got into trouble. Ninuta Shah Utsur kept his job several years uh, after Nabu Akhaidin, uh, and in fact, we see that the, 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 the the palace tried to get more and more control over the uh, over the temples in the years that came after. So they didn't see it. They didn't see the problem uh, uh, in Inuta Shah Utsu. For them, the problem was the local families, and they tried to get more and more control over the local families, uh, palace control. And finally, I want to give an example to some of the blind spots we have. Some of the problems that uh, 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 is looking at these huge fields through these very small cracks and only from one side of the fence. So this is a, a, a letter by Igi Duze Ibni. Uh, we know him to be the high priest of Shangu, of the town of Udanu, not far from Uru, dependent on Uru. And he's writing to Nabudat Shumi, who was the temple administrator. Uh, he blessed him with Mecene and Nergal decree, my father's well-being and vigor. Nergal is the main god of uh, Udanu. And he writes, regarding what my father wrote, you did not trust what I, what I told you. It is resolved. The lady of Uruk know that I did not receive surplus of silver, and something was Lechetu rather less. So it's not clear that the relation between the silver and Lechetu is not clear, but he didn't get surplus rather less. And when we look at the Akkadian, uh, it says, Kaspu Atta Lecheti, um, and we have to, to fill in the, the, the preposition. In theory, it would be silver from, for, of Rechetu. And when I translated this letter uh, based on common sense, because obviously we don't know the context, we don't know the, uh, exactly the story, I thought it made more sense that the silver, uh, that the silver came from Rechetu. The and then he continues in saying, I'm delivering something to my father. I am sending Rechetu and his household to my father. So this is a letter, uh, 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 when I translated, like many other letters, we don't, exactly understand what's going on. We, we, are, we, we are interrupting mid-conversation and there's no real way often to really understand what is going on. And that's fine, we live, uh, uh, we live it, that's, uh, 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 that's, that's not much of a problem. We have many of these cases. Um, a few years later, I came across another text, this time not a letter. Um, it's a receipt in which we, talk, uh, we hear that Igi Duzeu Ibni, so we have the same name we here, is identified as the son of Shana Bushu, was paid 10 minutes of silver from the temple store of Ishtar and Anaya, the purchase price of the Chetu. So we have again similar name, the reed worker, is identified as a reed worker, and Nabu Zebu Idin, his son. In the letter, we heard about uh, the household of the Chetu. So this really sounds like a similar, uh, the same case. We have the same names. Uh, 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 we have silver changing hands. We have the Chetu, his son, and Igidu Zevo Ibni. And Igidu Zevo Ibni is in a very uncommon name in the archive. So this must be the same case. But here we have something interesting. They're talking that the silver that is, uh, 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 that is paid here is the 
purchase price of Lachet, Shim Lachetu in Akkadi, in Akkadian. And this is, uh, uh, this is good because you would have purchase price for a slave. And Lachetu is definitely not identified as a slave. He is a street worker. And they, oh, it's also, uh, the, the, this deal also includes his son, which is very, very weird um, and unclear. To, I want to make it clear, I still don't understand exactly what's going on, but there is, a, 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 it is a sale of the Chetu, the reed worker, and his son. And if we go back to the letter, remember we had problem with the silver form of Chetu, which this is how I translated it because it made the most sense. But now, in light of uh, uh, what we know now, we can see that is actually silver over uh, So this is a purchase price of Ochetu. And this is just a small example of a probably a huge story, the selling of a man uh, that we still don't know much about, but uh, the archive is full of these smaller and larger uh, 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 cases. Uh, and yeah, this is uh, uh, just but one example uh, for this. So this is where I stop. I thank you for your, uh, uh, for your attention. And here is like the bibliography. Since, since this is recorded, you can pause and look at it. Thank you very much.